asked you guys what video you want to see next and I was a little surprised when more than half of you said you want to know what's on my phone. Okay. So I'll show you some ways I like to set up my device mixed in with a couple of tips you can use on your phone. So guys, let's get into it. So I'm currently rocking the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. I ordered it in the space gray. I must be honest, I wish they had more color options, but the space gray was definitely the next best thing. As I'm sure you can imagine, I have a very specific way I like to set up my device, so let me run through that first. One-handed mode must be enabled. With such a big device, I like to be able to quickly toggle into one-handed mode and then out again, especially when I need to reach the top of the screen. I also set up the edge screen lighting for notifications because it looks amazing on the S20 and of course, easily notifies me when I get any notifications. There are a bunch of options to choose from and customize, but I like the lime green color with the bubble effect. I also make sure swipe down anywhere for notifications is toggled on because it does just make accessibility a lot easier. And I don't want to struggle with reaching the top of the screen to see my notifications. Finally, my home screen app grid is set to 5x5 five five because I can fit a lot more apps in of course and I just like the look and layout of the 5x5 five five ratio. And speaking of the home screen, let me show you how I organize things. So as you can see, I have a packed home screen because when I open my phone, I want everything it is I'm looking for available immediately. Everything I need must be on this home screen. Then what I do is I organize my most used apps closest to my thumb. Because I use these apps so often, I want them to be easily accessible at any time without having to struggle to find them or open up the app drawer. I then organize the remainder of my apps in order of use. So for my least used apps, they are furthest away from my thumb, which is shopping and photo and video apps. What I also like to do is group applications in files and then label those files using emojis and capital letters. It just makes finding what I want that much easier and I like the look of the little emojis everywhere. It's fun. Sometimes I'll even color the folders but that depends completely on what background I'm using. So here I've just gone with white files because it works nicely with the background and doesn't clash. And then I also organize the quick settings panel to only have what I use. There are so many different settings and options that I don't use so I just like to remove those from the panel once again just to make everything easy to find and use at a glance. I highly recommend you guys try this. Okay, now let's quickly run through some apps. Under photo and video, these are apps I use to connect to my camera or gimbals and drone. Next is games. I don't actually play many mobile games, but I'm slowly getting into more and I just store those all together. Then for shopping, I have some local stores I like to shop from and of course, Amazon. Editing, these are all the apps I like to use to edit my images. The most used one I would have to say is Lightroom by far. Canva is also the most amazing design app. I refer to it as Photoshop for dummies because it's it's just so simple. And preview I use to organize my Instagram feed. I actually have a video on that too and I'll link it down below. Then all my Google apps, I use Docs and Sheets all the time. And this Transcribe app is incredible, guys. It's amazingly accurate. And then Google Lens is also surprisingly another app I use often. Some stats, these just help me keep an eye on things. So my website analytics, YouTube analytics, and then some partnership programs like Amazon Affiliates and Epidemic Sound, which is the company I use to source all my YouTube music from. From. So every time someone signs up to Epidemic via my link, I can just see everything there in stats. Banking, just some good old banking apps to do online banking. Then house, this is where I activate house alarms. I can see some remote cameras and also for some smart things like my color lights. Social is where all my social media apps go. These are the apps where I have social media accounts or like to view things like Netflix and Pinterest. And this app is for making WhatsApp stickers, which I love to do. <laughs> and then the rest are all just standard apps and as mentioned my most used apps so that's why none of them are in folders. I basically don't use any other apps other than these but if I do they get stored after the widget page. So here's where I like to have some widgets. I have my calendar so I can see everything at a glance, my phone optimization button to optimize my phone of course and a Spotify playhead. Then any other apps I use occasionally like these come after that. Now I love 
switching up our wallpapers and I really love bright colorful wallpapers too because I just find them super cheerful. So I'm always changing them up and as some of you will know I often create wallpapers for you guys to download. I have a bunch for free on my website so I'll have that link down below but for now I am using the sky theme background I created and it's nice and simple. Because I have so many apps on my home screen I don't want a crazy busy background. Then of course the minute I got this device I toggled on the 120 hertz refresh rate. I feel like it may have been to my detriment though because using any other device now feels so slow. <laughs> and another thing I like to change when first setting up my device is the brightness toggle and you can do that just by swiping down on the quick settings and then tap on these three little dots on the right hand side and select quick panel layouts. Just toggle this on and you're good to go. I changed that to the top of the screen because I just find it way more convenient to use up there throughout the day. Charging is pretty simple and standard. I use this 27 watt charger that Spigen kindly sent to me. It charges this bad boy super fast and I like that, especially because there's quite a big battery on this device. So charging it would naturally take longer than most other devices. I seldom use wireless charging. I find it a little frustrating, but I think that's because of all the cases and additional accessories I use on my S20 Ultra, which I'll get into shortly. But yeah, I just don't really use wireless charging. Covers and accessories are a big part of my device and setup actually. So at the moment I use these Samsung branded LED cases. It's so dope because when you place it face down on a countertop or receive a call, the entire back lights up like this. I mean, come on guys. If you take pictures, it even has a countdown timer displayed on the back and a number of other different things. But they do recommend not to wireless charge if you're using these covers. So there's that. Spigen also creates a number of epic cases that I love and and are really durable. Another accessory I usually place on my phones is one of these grip rings. They are just the most useful things ever and they are so inexpensive and stop me from dropping my expensive phone. I just haven't fixed one on my S20 Ultra at the moment because I can't bring myself to put one on this case. <laughs> Finally, when I'm out and about and sometimes have a lot of things in my bag, I put my phone in a sunglasses pouch to keep the screen protected and it's just like another layer of protection for your super expensive device. Then I thought I would include some quick fire facts for you guys. So what is my favorite app? It has got to be Spotify. I don't think I could ever live without music guys. Then my most used app based on screen on time is surprise, surprise, YouTube. My favorite game has got to be Alto's Adventure and Alto's Odyssey. They're free on Android, but on iPhone you have to pay for them, which is weird, but it's a brilliant game. It's highly addictive. And I also love to play the occasional Tetris game. I also do use the built-in Samsung keyboard. I don't want to switch to the Gboard because I just prefer the placement that the Samsung keyboard has over Gboard, but they're both still pretty good keyboards. So guys, let me know if you got any cool tips out of this video and if you have any tips on your device setup, pop them down in the comment section and also let me know what other videos you guys want to see. But if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe or you can check out some of my other videos right over here. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Toodles!